Good morning, good morning. Welcome everybody to Cowboy Church, Mojave County. We're glad you're here. Coffee bar is still open. We've got a few minutes before we kick this off. We're going to do a baptizing this morning. We've got coffee and stuff back there. Be sure and get it. And, and right after Cowboy Church, Chuck Wagon's over there cooking. Chuck Wagon, Chuck Wagon lunch right after Cowboy Church. I don't know what they're cooking over there for sure, but you can bet it's good. So be sure and get over there and get you something to eat right after Cowboy Church. We've got other things too. This morning, since there's there's frost on the ground, um, all of our little wranglers are going to stay in here this morning. Um, Mr. Fred's not feeling good. Miss Kathy's holding his hand, and um, and it's cold over there, so we. We, we're keeping little wranglers over here with us this morning. So we just hug up and keep warm over here. How about the stoves going? On the wood burners, huh? That's your Tuesday crew got that done. You know, everything else. All right, if you need any help finding a seat, let me know. I'll get one of our arm dusters to help you. Uh, today, we'd like to honor all the veterans that are in the house. We kind of like to celebrate Veterans Day with a Veterans Day Memorial on Sundays for them. So we're going to start off with God Bless the USA by Lee Greenwood. If tomorrow all the you come, I worked out all my life and I had to start again. Just my children and my wife. I thank my lucky style. To be living here today Cause I think my freedom And I can't take that away Now I'm proud to be an American Well at least I know I'm free And I won't forget The men who died and gave that right to me Oh I'll gladly stand up next to you Defender still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA From the lakes of Minnesota To the hills of Tennessee Across the plains of Texas from sea to shining sea She joined down to Houston From New York to L.A. There's a pride in every American heart And it's time we stand and say That I'm proud to be an American Well, at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the man who died and gave that right to me Oh, I'll gladly stand up next to you And defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA And I'm proud to be an American But at least I know I'm free And I won't Forget the men who died and gave that right to me. Oh, I'll gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. Welcome everybody to Cowboy Church this morning. Thank you, veterans. Thank you, veterans. Thank you. Um, our, our normal routine is a little bit different today. Of course, there's never anything normal about our routine. I just want to welcome everybody here for our first time visitors and new folks here. I just want you to know that we do have thoroughly modern facilities here at Cowboy Church. 
right outside the east door over here uh, is our, our White House. And uh, it has real handy furniture in it. And it's much more efficient than the one in Washington, D.C., because ours actually flushes. Um, I think I would, we'll just stop right there. We'll do announcements and stuff pretty soon. I'm here. And Betty's here. I, we were fortunate. Some man from out here in the North District gave me a bunch of brand new kids things. I've got trampolines. I've got step uh, ladders. I've got tents for kids. And they're all still in their boxes. And if anybody would be interested, let me know. If you do, I'll bring them to Steve all the guys up there. So let me know. They're $10. That's the price I put on for the church. So if you want, let me know. Thank you. Thank you. That's, what, that's, what, that's what I think. They're print. They're Christmas presents. Might be. But he just came in and he said he had them. And I had to follow him out to Amen. his place. And he loaded the back of my truck. So if anybody lets me know, they're $10. If you want one, let me know and I'll bring them. I'll bring a truckload of what I have Tuesday. Thank you. The... Um, I just got one more thing this this morning. Announcements. <laughs> oh, God's break. We never got that. Let's pray. Yeah, some, ring the bell for me, Betty, over there. Going to have an official start. Thank you. It don't ding if you hold on to it. You see, you have to have experience in the, in the, in the, what did they used to call those? The realm of the bell ringing. Yeah, but it was, uh, what they call it? Percussion band or something like that. Yeah, and, and uh, when you're in kindergarten, you learn how to play one of those. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for all blessings today, and each one's here, Father. Um, thank you for your patience, your grace, and your mercy, Lord. Bless your word. Bless the worship, the praise, the music, Father. Bless the one coming for baptism this morning, Father. Bless our food and bless the hands that's prepared at the Chuck Wayne. Lord, just guide us and direct us. Help us to grow, to be a witness and have a testimony for the uh, neighborhood around us, Father, in our community. They might come to know Jesus as our Savior and help us learn how to get along with you, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Church says. Yeah. Cowboy Church says. Yeah. And Bob says. Check, 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 you're on, check, 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 check. No, I Roger touched it, <laughs> I'm going to get a t-shirt for that one too, <laughs> this, this is what we're going to try to do on every baptism that comes up, it's a beautiful song written by Kenny Chesney, so. Summer breeze made ripples on the pond, rattled through the reeds and the willow trees beyond. Daddy in his good hat, all in the Sunday dress, washed with pride as the sun down and the water rubbed to my chest. Okay. And the preacher talked about the I take my toes into that East Tennessee mud. It was down with the old man, up with the new. Raised to walk in the way of life and truth. Didn't see no angels, just a 
you sang from the shore. But I felt like a newborn baby, cradled up in the arms of the Lord. Amazing grace, oh how sweet the sound. There was glory in the air, there was dinner on the ground. My sins were many, were washed away and gone. Along with the buffalo nickel, I forgot to leave you at home. And it seemed like such a small, small price to pay. It came to me that that sunny day it was down with the old hand. Up with the middle, raised to walk in the way of life, and to didn't see no angels, just a few snakes on the shore. But I felt like a newborn baby, cradled up in the arms of the Lord. This road is long and dusty, sometimes it's cold, it can't be cleansed. And I long to feel that water rushing over me again. It was down with the old man, up with the new. Raised to walk in the way of life and truth. Didn't see no angels, just a few saints on the shore. But I felt like a newborn baby. Cradled up in the arms of the Lord. I felt like a newborn baby. Cradled up in the arms of the Lord. $2,044 that is Martin Barnsell for the first one the afternoon. That's the fourth one on the floor, Dave. All right, baptism. Come on, Mr. Richard. I advise everybody to do this at least once every 71 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least once every 71 years. All right. There you go. You don't remember the first one, do you? That's what I thought. You can't stay there. All right. Richard. You have put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ for forgiveness of your sins and you want to follow him as your Lord and identify yourself as his followers. Is that correct? Amen. We're going to baptize you. Hold your nose. Lean back. It's not as warm as it's been, and there's oh, no we'll ice on it. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do Lord next. Yeah. Yeah. Might want to stand by the heat. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Now what? Do Lorders. Do Lorders. Do Lorders.
Thank you. All right, this is for the veterans here. Uh, I know everybody knows the chorus, they can sing along the chorus, so. You pack your bag, you shut the door, you cross the sea to fight a war. You didn't know just what would happen. Boots on the ground, the gunfire was the only sound. And to yourself, you whisper, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. lights on and, and the wood and the heaters. That's important this time of year. Mute, telephone, mute, airplane mode, because we don't want Steve have to get up and embarrass you during church. The thing goes off, so turn, turn, uh, what that now? Turn, 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 the, turn the phones off, and uh, I, did you turn yours off? Did you turn mine off? Mine's in the office. <laughs> you give me yours all the time? I turned it off. Um, it, what else did I, little Wrangler's going to stay in here with us this morning because it's cold over in the other place. And um, it's okay. We'll have a good time. Anything else? What else? Tuesday morning workers, man, they're getting it done. Insulation makes a difference in the barn, doesn't it? Just wait till we, we get the ends closed up and stuff like that, you know. Porcelain on the floor. I'm looking for bathrooms. Yeah, that's why I said porcelain on the floor. What else? Wednesday night, we have... Uh, uh, pastor's round pen 
on Wednesday night at 5.30. We eat at 5.30 and we have Bible study from 6 to 7. And we leave at 7.01 pr promptly. Yeah, so, uh, so I can go home and feed the goats. Um, what else? I told you about announcements, right? Oh, show us the announcement. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see you but just in case. <laughs> what else we got? Wednesday night is next Saturday. Trail ride next Saturday. The what? Tuesday workers, yeah. We want Tuesday workers to work from usually about 9 o'clock, something like that. Bob's up here about 4 and starts the fire, so it'll be warm before you come up here and work. You know, uh, but y'all doing a good job of getting her done. At least you won't sweat so much right now. Yeah. You know, while we're getting all this done. It's good. There's bound to be something else. Can you think of anything? Mm -hmm. Leadership team meeting right after Cowboy Church today. I did talk about Chuck Wagon. So those in the leadership team, as soon as we get out of Cowboy Church, you run over there and get in line first and get you something to eat and come on up in the trailer over there. We'll shiver together and do our meeting. We're at the... In the white trail. What else we got? Do you hear that? But it's in the announcements, right? Mm. <laughs> then on the ground next Sunday, and and I my mouth's already watering. All right. Back in the in the years when I was a Cowboys football fan, one of my favorite guys was Don Meredith. When he was quarterback, he was a good quarterback. He was. Probably the first world famous Cowboys quarterback, um, Don Meredith, and uh, he got to he got he he was a real famous singer too. Did you know that? Because when the game looked like it was in the bag, he'd sing, "Turn out the lights, the party's over." Monday night football. Monday night football. The name of my message today is "Turn out the lights, the party's over." How many of you are looking for the Lord to come back any minute? That's a good bunch. Any minute. I do believe. I do hope. You know, um, you realize that in, um, we call it the Lord's Prayer, but it's the model prayer that Jesus gave us to, to pray. Do you remember what he said? He said in Matthew 6, 9, he says, After this matter, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. You know what you're praying for when you pray that? Praying for the rapture to be over. You're praying for the tribulation to be over. You're praying for the judgment to be over. And the Lord Jesus Christ sitting on the throne ruling the entire universe. And the devil's locked up. Amen. That's what we're praying for. Thy kingdom come. So that includes hurry up and blast us out of here, Lord, you know, because the kingdom don't come till we're going home. And uh, I, I, I was thinking about that and I thought, looking at the way the world is right now, the way things are, man, they're, there's, they're trying to blow us up. You know, everywhere you turn, uh, Korea, North Korea is threatening to nuke us. Uh, China wants to tangle with us and wants us defeated. Russia says if you don't do like I want done, I'm going to nuke you. Um, and then um, it's hard to determine what our government says. But we're, we're in a situation where it's turn out the lights, the party's over. The, um, I, I have hoped for years that our nation would just overcome the evil in this world and that there would be a coast-to-coast -coast revival that would spread around this world and and we would just see revival but but um, that's not the plan um, because the rest of that prayer there is thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven God's got a plan and we're part of that plan and he's working that plan and I think that we are the most blessed generation since Jesus walked on the face of this earth. I mean, to have been here when the Messiah was born and grew up and died for our sins and the church started, the Holy Spirit came and dwells 
in us. That had to be fantastic times. And those people then thought Jesus was going to establish his kingdom right then. They all thought that. I said, Jesus, what's the signs? When are we going to do this kingdom thing? You know, let's, let's get throw Rome out. I'd like to throw Rome out today. Hadn't happened. You know, it's a interesting thing. I was looking at some historical stuff, and when Ben Franklin came out of the uh, convention where they was writing the Constitution for this new United States, someone asked him, says, what kind of government we got? Republic or a monarchy? And Ben Franklin said, Republic, if you can keep it. Second Chronicles 7, 12, 22, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night. Solomon was David's son, followed, followed David and sat on the throne and built the temple that David wanted built for God. And uh, I think he'd have probably been a better king if he hadn't fooled around so many women. But, but, um, no reflection on the women. <laughs> we got we got to have women. <laughs> you know, boy, I'm keeping this is anybody wanna come up here and pinch head for a while? <laughs> and the and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and <laughs> said unto him, I've heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. What sacrifices? We was talking about that, I was talking about somebody who was reading the Old Testament and he's talking about all them sacrifices. Larry over at the door. Said he's listening to the Bible every day now. That's a good thing, Larry. And he says, man, he says that Deuteronomy's full of, of sacrifice stuff you got to do. And I, yeah, that's it. You mess up, you go take a turtle dove or a pigeon or partridge in a pear tree or whatever it is. And, and you take them in there and sacrifice them. And that shed blood temporarily covered over that sin you did that you confessed. And that went on until Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, came to this earth to shed His holy blood for all of us that our sins might forever be forgiven and opening a pathway for us to have fellowship with the God that created us by relationship with Him by being born again. Solomon was looking for that day and he wanted to please God and do the things God wanted him to do until the Messiah came. And God says, if I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, we're seeing that. We're experiencing that too. You know, all my life, all my life, we have been prosperous, coddled, spoiled brats. God's people have set back and let the devil's people run God out of our public, out of schools. God's people have set back and let sin be acceptable. God's people have set back and let the devil kill millions of babies, sacrifice. God's people have set back and allowed evil to rule. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. That's our part. That's what we got to do. It's what we need to do. We need to be serious. And I believe this is the most serious bunch I've ever seen. About get, learning how to get along with God and get along with God. Um, the mission of Cowboy Church is to teach people how to get along with God. I was in church 30 years before I ever learned how to get along with God. I heard lots of sermons and knew a lot of um, Bible history and verses and stuff and student of the Bible but I nobody ever taught me how to get along with God that I knew I had to be born again to be saved but then what? Nobody ever told me that God's my father and in order to have fellowship with him I gotta have clean hands and a clean heart in order to have his power in my life I gotta have fellowship with him if you're not in fellowship with him, it's very frustrating to be a Christian. It's very frustrating. Think, what, what is wrong? We feel guilt. We feel shame. We feel lost. We're easy to deceive and lead off into false doctrines and stuff when you're out of fellowship with God. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, it means being prayed up, fessed up, well fed, Turn from their wicked ways. Asking God to direct their steps. 
then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Verse 15 says, Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house. You know what this house is today? It's our bodies. That's the temple that God is sanctifying by us being prayed up, fessed up, well fed for the Spirit of God to dwell in and for us to walk in spiritual awareness of God with His understanding, His direction, and to fulfill His purposes. I've chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever. And so be it in the bride. Mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me, prayed up, fast up, well fed, as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shall observe my statutes and my judgments. That's getting along with him, getting along with God. Then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom. Thy kingdom come, Lord comes. Come, Lord Jesus. According as I have covenanted with David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. Jesus is the lawful heir, the righteous heir, and the only living heir to that throne. But if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them. We do that and don't even know it. By being caught up in the ways of the world, um, I don't know, but I would imagine the vast majority of people in here have glanced, maybe, at their horoscope once in a while. Idol worship. Serving demons. That's what it is. Oh, it's just fun. Yeah. Being demon-directed and demon-influenced is but it's deadly. Then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land which I have given them in this house, which I have sanctified for my name. Will I cast out of my sight and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. And this house, which is high, shall be an astonishment to everyone that passes by us. Have you read any of the comments from the press and stuff in in foreign countries about the United States. You know we have become the laughing stock of the world rather than the world leader. They can't believe how stupid we are. They can't believe. And we just kind of think, well, this is the way it is. Nothing I can do about it. That's where we're at, isn't it? I'm busy. You know, I've got to go to bingo tonight or I don't have time to whatever. <coughs> Shall be an astonishment to everyone that passes by it, so that he shall say, Why hath the Lord done thus unto this land and unto this house? Well, I can stand here today and tell you why. It's because, as God says, my people have forsaken him for our own prosperity, for our own personal pleasures. One thing that just stands out in my mind, I don't want any women throwing any rocks at me. But have you ever noticed the sheer volume of people who have perfectly good blue jeans that they've ripped up and are proud of them? It's a fashion statement. Can you believe that? I mean, to take a pair of Wranglers and treat them like that, that's unholy. You know, but isn't that what the world's doing? I think it is, you know, and we all want to be individuals, but we want to look like everybody else and act like everybody else, no matter how stupid. What's happened to us? I wonder what the percentage of the population of Golden Valley this morning is that's in church. It's small all across this country. A Christian nation, a republic established on the laws of God, law and order and justice. But I've heard stripers are really biting. So, uh, you know, you got to do a certain amount of fishing on Sundays. I get close to God on Sundays while I'm putting that anchovy on the hook. I'm thanking God for the anchovies. 
Why hath the Lord done this unto this land and unto this house? And it shall be answered because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. When we get saved, that's what God is doing. He's delivering us out of the worldliness into the spiritual kingdom of God. We've changed zip codes for eternity. Brought them forth out of the land of Egypt and laid hold on other gods and worshipped them and served them and read their horoscopes. Oh, I put that in there. Therefore hath he brought all this evil upon us. You know, when it says brought this evil upon us, you know what it is? Sometimes it's just daddy spanking your hands when you're reaching for the hot skillet on the stove. Sometimes it's flat out beating your butt for thumbing your nose at him and poking him in the eye. God's just, and he's merciful. I can't believe how merciful it is. Every morning when I wake up, I just think, God, how merciful you are to have allowed me to, to live. I deserve death. I deserve bad zip code. I will do. But God, by his grace and his mercy... I said, I'll provide a way for you to be saved out of that zip code and have a permanent good zip code. Putting your faith and trust in me. You just believe and trust I'll do that. And I've done that. It's hard to do, it seems like. John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's expedient for you that I go away. Jesus' disciples are saying, when are we going to do this, Lord? When are we going to take over? It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Our Lord and Savior paid the price for us to have the Holy Spirit of God dwell in us that we might have purpose and direction in our lives, that we might have fellowship with God. When God created man, he gave man a spirit. Why did he give man a spirit? Apricots don't have spirits. But man has spirits. God gave us a spirit so we could have fellowship with the God of creation. But God will not fellowship with sin. So we have to have a covering. And the covering for us to go before God with our prayers, with our requests, with our fellowship, seeking comfort, whatever it is, our covering is the righteousness of the Lord Jesus. Perfect righteousness. It's His righteousness. It's a covering that put over us, that covers us, that covers our sins, that paid the price for our sins, that we might have fellowship with God. We get along with God by being prayed up, fessed up, well fed. He says, I'll send him unto you. And then verse in John 14, 3, he says, If I go prepare a place for you, I'll come again. That's where we're at. We're right at that comma right now. I will come again and receive you unto myself. I told a, I told a guy the other day that uh, you can blame me. It's my fault. Jesus hasn't come yet. He said, well, how does that one make sense? It's your fault. I said, well, the Bible says that he'll come in a day when you think not. And there ain't no days I think not. I think he's coming every day, you know. So it must be my fault. I ain't going to stop think, thinking not. I ain't going to stop. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. We've got t-shirts that we've been selling. One of them says, Normal isn't coming back. Jesus is. I think, I think we've sold more of them than any of them. <laughs> It's got scripture on it too. There, folks. It's time. It's time. I mean, just think about all the people that's going through the River Jordan horse tank just this year. Folks that have known God all their life. I've never baptized so many people over 80 in my whole life as I have this year. People coming, saying, 
Yeah, been a Christian all my life. Now maybe I need to check into it. And I, I want to get right. I want to do what God wants me to do. I want to get along with God. You know, without Him, we ain't got a shot at nothing. We ain't got a chance. He says, I'll forgive their sin and heal their land. Need that. We need our land healed. Normal isn't coming back. Isaiah 54, 14. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. Prayed up, fessed up, well fed, in fellowship. For thou shalt not fear from terror. And terror is coming, folks. This world hates Christians. For it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Divine protection. Good reason to be prayed up, fessed up, well fed. Paul calls it the whole armor of God. Paul calls it walking in the spirit. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that's formed against thee shall prosper. And he's talking to God's children. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me. See? Our righteousness is Christ's righteousness. Saith the Lord. That's for the people of the Lord, for the prodigal, for the obedient. I'm saying, folks, get ready. Be ready. Be strong. Look out for one another. Love one another. Help one another. Or keep your eyes open. Turn out the lights. The party's over. It's time. Psalms 34, 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Revelation twenty two seventeen says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, right now, today. Get prayed up, fessed up, well fed. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that's thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. John 8, 12 says, Then, then Jesus said again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. It's not the Green New Deal. He said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. What's the good news? What's the gospel? The good news is, what must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Why are people away from God, separated from God, don't know God? Not because they don't belong to the right church. It's not because they don't have a family heritage of a certain religion or whatever. It's because they don't believe Jesus died for their sins. Or even that they don't believe there is a Jesus. Whatever it is. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God's raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. What happens when we mess up? Because I tell you, you can be saved and baptized today and feel like a burden's been lifted from you and think you can be a little Jesus. And then you turn right around and some of the old things start popping up to flesh. Is persistent in our lives. Old habits are hard to break. Sin's easy. But boy, it's a heavy taskmaster. Little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. John wrote, it's best if you don't sin. Well, I wish I never did. And if any man does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And he is the propitiation for our sins. He's the covering. He's the full payment for our sinfulness. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Even those that don't believe and don't accept him. Jesus paid for their sins. They just have to believe to pick up their pardon. Turn out the lights. Party's over. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin will heal their land let's turn the lights back on folks
Let's light up this world with the gospel of Jesus. Let's light up this world with our own obedience to God, God's Word. Let's get her done. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for the blessings this day for each one that's here, Father. Put your Word in our hearts, Father. Give us a hunger for your Word. Give us a desire, Lord, to get along with you. Father, show us the paths you'd have us to follow. Show us the opportunities, Father, that we might shed the light of salvation to those living in darkness around us, Father. I ask your blessing upon us, your protection, Father, your provision, your guidance, your direction, your blessing, Father. We ask all these things in Jesus' name, church says. Amen. Cowboy church says. Yeehaw. And Joe says. Anybody that needs a one-year Bible, I've got some.